Well, last week it was colder than a well digger out here. Today I'm in a t-shirt. Never know what you're gonna get in this part of the country, but hey, one thing you can bet on, if it's cold and you've got one of these John Deere 5 Series tractors, sooner or later, it's gonna be time to put a starter on it. Well, I think today's the day. So let's see what we can do to this thing. Maybe it'll work out easy. Maybe I wish I'd took it to the dealer. We'll find out in a little while. Like I think I've told you before, I wouldn't have a tractor that didn't have a bucket on it or you know some front end loader or something, but I guarantee you whenever you have to work on these things, they sure are a pain in the butt. Anyway, we're gonna start out by trying to get that starter out of there, disconnecting the battery and everything. You can't even see it, but I promise you it's back there. So that doesn't bode well for what my hands are gonna feel like when I try to mess with this thing. We'll see how it goes. Starting out with what I can get to, which ain't a whole lot, don't look like. We'll put a 17 millimeter on that. I've disconnected the battery terminal, so I won't be arcing out anything. We'll back that off, that's a 17 millimeter, so take that one off first. Behind that nut, you'll find another one. Another, I think that's a 17 also. So disconnect it. From your, all that's on your solenoid, so get all them wires off your solenoid so you can get to the other stuff. Okay, back there you can see two nuts. There, take there, it's a plastic cover over that to keep you from jumping or arcing out that uh, oh crap, the solenoid there. Take them off with a 10 millimeter and you can get that plastic gadget off. All right, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but there was a plastic cover over there. Take them, you can see. A stud on top and a stud on the bottom. 10 millimeter sockets will get it off with a lot of praying and bad words, whichever one you prefer. And then you jerk it out of there with a pair of pliers. You don't gotta come out of there in one piece because I got no intention of ever putting it back on. It's not a heat shield, it's not important other than to, well, I don't know what it's, what it's on there for. I guess it's like your appendix. If you got it, you're happy, but if you don't got it, now, there's a reason you take that plastic piece off because there's a little old wire up under there that is held down by, I guess, about an eight millimeter nut. It's got to come off too in order to get everything disconnected before you can even take the two bolts that you can't even see out of this starter. I hope I wind up saving enough money whenever I do this because I don't know what John Deere charges, but I'm already starting to think that it might've been worth the money. All right, somewhere, let's see if I can get the light to shine on it. There, okay. That bolt there is one of the ones that's got to come out. I think it's supposed to be 15 millimeters, and the other one is going to be right down. You can all, if I get that light just right, right there at the bottom of it, you can barely see it. It'll be the other one. That don't look like that's going to be much more fun than taking those wires off. However, I was right about that being an eight millimeter deep well socket. All right, so I was right about that being an eight millimeter socket that took this little wire off here. Impossible to see, but really not all that hard to get to. It came off, it would have come off this, it'd be that same nut right there. Come off this, that goes to your tractor too. I guess it, it tell, the starter tells, I mean the key tells that to engage the starter. So anyway, get, the wiring harness off here and the wiring harness off here and take the cover off. You got it made. Or you, no, you got the wiring part made. Then the fun begins where you take a bolt off here and then one at 180 degrees from it in the backside. Get that out and it ought to just fall out of there. We'll see. All right. That's the bottom bolt. That's the one that's, I'm going to try to take out first. So then, I don't know why. I'm just. Looks more fun. Anyway, you think, okay, that looks easy. Well, it's not, cause you got about mm, an inch and a half of space to stick a ratchet up through, so there's no turning it. So I've got an air ratchet. I'm gonna try to put on it and see if that'll back it out. So with all this extension and wobbling and the 16 millimeter socket, I was able to reach in there and get that bolt out of the front side of that starter. I mean, I'm sorry, the back side of that starter. Get it get it fished out of that hole. And uh, it wasn't easy, but 
managed to pull it off. And there's what it looks like once you get it out of the hole. And if you might remember, I had earlier in the video, there was another one laying in here in the floor. And you realize, hey, that don't look the same as that other one. And you'd be exactly right. They're not the same starters. So that means I had to make a trip back to John Deere and buy an OEM. So uh, the reality is it's a day later now. And I'm fixing to try to stab the new one in this hole. Get all sweaty and get aggravated and see if I can make this happen. So I uh, was able to fish that thing in there and drop it in the hole and all that extension that I had put together, crawl up under it and use it as a rod to kind of roll it around and push it on that stud that sticks out. Not a real super difficult task, but I can assure you that there is no way you're gonna reach your hand in there and put that bolt on. So what I've done is took some electrical tape and kind of wadded it up inside my socket here and then got that bolt stuck in there and I'm hoping I can fish that extension down through there and get that bolt started that way. And then once it gets tight, that uh, all, all that should pull off of that bolt pretty easy. Hopefully, I'll let you know. All right, so that seemed to actually have worked. I've got that screw, that bolt started. So now what I'm gonna do with this piece of tape here, just roll it up sticky side out, kind of put it in here sideways and try to put this nut in there the same way. Oops, this is hard to do and keep it on camera. But I'm basically gonna try to do the same trick down in that extension with that. And I'm gonna try to get that nut started on the backside. And if I can do that, then this thing ought to be mostly downhill from there. As you can see, I've got that nut on there, got it started. Now again, it's not tight, but at least it's up there and holding the starter in place. So now it's just a matter of getting that air ratchet back on it and getting it all tightened down. So this is the way you wanna route that extension through there between your waterline hose here, your blow-by hose here, all this crap for this, uh, whatever you call that crap that the government makes them put on it to where it don't pollute the environment. Fish it through there that way and you can get, if <clears throat> you can barely see that socket, but it's in there on that bolt. If you get it routed through there, then you've got a straight enough line where you can turn the end of this extension with a ratchet and get her snug on down. And from the bottom nut on that starter, you just want to route it out. I can back off from this thing enough. Right up through here and you can get on it and put a ratchet on it again. And get her torqued on down and you'll be good. Okay, so now I've got the starter actually tied down. It's just a matter of getting her all wired up now. So we gotta reach in there Back that nut off, which it should be easy. Tie it on, tie this on. And then there's a small wire that engages, tells the solenoid to engage right here. So button up all the wiring harness to your starter. You got two wires that go under that bolt right there. I kind of fabricated that a little different than the way it come off, but it'll work. And then you got that little green joker right there. Goes onto a stud. And I just can't hardly let you see. It's just to the right of where that green wire ends. Anyway, that takes an eight millimeter socket. And you basically got to start it on there with that piece of tape, or, or that's the way I found it, the best way to do it is, with a shallow socket and then swap over to a deep one because you don't have much room to operate. Anyway, that long-winded sucker with them fine threads seems like it takes about 40 turns to finally get it to sink in there. But once it does, it's there, so... After that, it's just get your battery hooked back up. Oh yeah, and I need to bolt that deal back down to the block, but other than that, that and the battery and I am ready to go. So when it's all said and done, starter bolted up, wires tied down, battery tied down, everything you want it where you want it to be. It's time for the moment of truth. Let's see what she'll do. Well, the battery's working. Well, 
starter works. I think I need to put a fuel filter on it now, but other than that, we're good to go. Time to go put some hay out. So when this thing's all said and done, I never did give you a tool list, but what you're gonna need, I used half inch drive stuff because I've got a lot more variety of it that in quarter than I do three eighths. Uh, you'll need in a half inch drive, you'll want about 18 inches worth of extensions, which sounds like a lot, but it took it all in one capacity or another. Uh, you'll want a 16 millimeters, all metric, 16, 17, a 13, and then in my quarter inch drive, I just used a 10 millimeter and eight millimeter for uh, the battery and the small wires on the starter. You'll want some sort, if you have some of those angled pry bars, those would be great. If you don't, a good size screwdriver will work. Um, and you're gonna need a flashlight and somebody to hold it. So you can see what you're doing in a lot of times, but, uh, or some work lights, if you've got that. But anyway, I don't know what John Deere charges. I've heard it's an arm and a leg. The starter from John Deere is $505. And if you figure in shop time, I bet you it run you $1,500. Uh, my time in it was probably about two hours and that's because it was a learning process. A lot of that time was spent chasing, running back and forth to the toolbox. But actually putting it back together was quicker than taking it all apart because I already had every tool I needed figured out by then. Uh, I bet if I had it to do over again, I could probably do it in an hour and a half. It's intimidating, but it's not impossible. The toughest thing about it is the fact that you're wedged into some spots that it's, you can't reach it with your hands. So you've got to be steady enough with the extensions and everything to get it in there. If you've got a magnet or some magnetized sockets that would probably help putting it together if you don't like i say you can take that tape and wad it up in there or some wax would work great if not um well like i say you can find a little chunk of magnet and just drop it off in the tip you know down in that extent down in that socket and uh that would keep them keep your keep your bolts and you know nuts and bolts in it and you would be uh you know it ain't that hard then but there's no way you're going to stick your hand into a lot of those places so don't even waste your time thinking you're going to go there but like i say um, when you hit that starter before whenever it get cold that thing would drag and it got to the point where it would hardly turn it over at all but this new one you it's a world of difference it it'll womp, 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 and it's gone you know so you're you're in a it's, it's worth the money, I, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, other than fighting that dragon sucker, because eventually it's going to get to where it's not going to turn at all. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you later.